The San Antonio Spurs were the grand prize winners in this year's NBA Draft Lottery, and barring something crazy happening, that means Victor Wembanyama will be heading to San Antonio. And as you're probably very aware of, the Spurs have a great track record of turning number one overall draft picks into eventual Hall of Fame players. We saw that play out with David Robinson and Tim Duncan. Among the many interesting storylines going forward in San Antonio will be how Wemby meshes with the team's other young players, particularly Jeremy Sohan, last year's number nine overall draft pick. In this video, I'm gonna analyze how Sohan did in his final few months of the season, especially since I had already done a roundup of him just before the start of the 2023 calendar year. Now we need to remember that offense and in particular scoring is not his main strength yet at least, but he does possess some intriguing skills on the offensive end. Defense is his bread and butter, and I will dive into that a bit as well later in the video. It's also important to highlight that he didn't play a ton down the stretch of the season, only six games in February and six games in March, and then he didn't play at all in April. Comparing his play in the first two months of the calendar year versus March, something stood out to me. One of them being that he was taking way more of his shots closer to the basket in his final several games of the season and making them at a higher clip as well. In January and February combined, he averaged just three shots within four feet of the hoop and made just under 61% of them. In March, he averaged a shade under six field goal attempts within four feet and shot nearly 74% on them. That's according to Second Spectrum. Now again, this was only a six game sample, but it seemed to me that the Spurs were exploring ways to get him more looks near the basket. Just analyzing the way Sohan scored these short distance shots, nine of his 34 attempts within four feet in March came off cuts and he made eight of them. His movement without the ball is very impressive and off ball movement is something Spurs players under Greg Popovich have historically excelled at. While a bit reckless on his drives, he did make a concerted effort to get all the way to the basket when he put the ball on the floor. In those six March games combined, he made seven driving shots within four feet. He made just two of them in February. Again, same number of games and pretty close to the same number of minutes. He also had a couple of alley-oop dunks in March. Another thing that stood out to me in March was his relentlessness on the glass. He averaged 7.8 rebounds that month, almost three more than in January and February combined. He was able to score on some putbacks as a result of his effort on the offensive glass. Something else he started doing more of as the season went on was play with his back to the basket in the post. In fact, before January 1st, he took just 10 post-up shots and after he took 25 of them. However, he was not very efficient, making just nine of those 25 tries. Still, it was encouraging that he was willing to try and take advantage of his length over smaller defenders. What really tumbled was his perimeter shooting. In those 12 February and March games combined, he made just seven of his 38 three-point attempts, which is 18.4%. Among all players who took at least 30 three-point attempts after February 1st, that was the second worst percentage in the league. He made just two of his 16 corner three-point attempts after the new year, which was the worst percentage in the NBA during this time. What was more impressive after January 1st was his playmaking, which coming into the league was considered a strength of his. He dished out four plus assists in seven of those 26 games after New Year's Day, including in a game against Phoenix on January 28th, when he had a season best 30 points to go along with eight rebounds and five assists. Perhaps this was a game that can help us give us an idea of what he can be offensively if he puts it all together. Sohan really did a little bit of everything. From a scoring standpoint, he made 11 floor shots and they included this layup on a fast break after a Phoenix turnover. This pull up jumper. A post turn and fade over Cam Johnson. 
and this crafty layup after driving baseline. And then among his five dimes were this terrific bounce pass to a baseline cutting Malachi Branham and these kickout passes to Keldon Johnson and Keita Bates Diop for threes. Getting into his defense a bit here, although San Antonio as a team had the league's worst defensive rating this season, it was clear all year that Sohan makes his biggest impact on this end of the floor. He guards in space very well, and at 6'8 with a 7 foot plus wingspan, he obstructs a lot of shots. Here's a collection of clips from after January 1st that show him moving his feet well and perfectly timing his contests against some top tier players such as LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Jalen Brunson, Lowry Markkinen, Paolo Bencaro, Julius Randle, and Jalen Brown. And as you see here, he has great instincts with a knack for swiping the ball away from ball handlers. He's good at using his length to cause disruption in the passing lanes too. As far as comparisons, I think he and Scotty Barnes are very similar. On defense, they're both versatile, guard multiple positions, move their feet well on the perimeter, and use their length to disrupt shots. Barnes is a little more polished of a playmaker but the vision and instincts to me are similar. Also, the pace they play at is a match. And when I did the Scotty Barnes video a few weeks ago, I mentioned Boris Diaw as a comp for him, and I think that applies to Sohan as well. Diaw had a high basketball IQ and used his size well in the post and as a playmaker. Of course, Sohan gets compared to Dennis Rodman a lot because of the hair and physical frame. And I do think there is some commonality on a basketball level. I don't think Sohan will ever be the rebounder that Rodman was, and I'm not sure if his toughness and intensity will ever be an exact match, but Sohan is an energy and hustle type player as well. You could suggest he's a less athletic Aaron Gordon in the fact that they're both very versatile on both ends of the floor, have the same length, and can be effective with or without the ball in their hands. Gordon has thrived playing alongside Nikola Jokic, who's a master at finding cutters, which Gordon does quite a bit for Denver. Just some general 2022-23 season stats for Sohan. In 56 games, he averaged 11 points, 5.3 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 0.8 steals, and 0.4 blocks, and he shot 45.3% from the field, 24.6% from three-point range, and just under 70% from the free throw line. So that'll wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe.